Hi everybody, Ryan here again. Uh, today, got everything laid out to get the truck ready for the winter time, going over the Rocky Mountains and Cascades and Sierras and all that out west. Uh, so I got a lot of different stuff here I want to talk about. A lot, of, a lot of stuff you probably know about and a lot of it you may not. And this probably isn't everything. I'm sure other people probably have other stuff out there too to add. Uh, I might even, after the fact, I probably have other stuff that I've forgotten about here, but I think I've got about every, the most of everything out. So, uh, again, I'll start with the chains, which a lot of people are scared of. Uh, I carry six of them. Most states out there, they want you to have four for the truck and two for the trailer for one on each axle. And I believe it's Washington State they actually want you to have six plus a spare. So they want you to have seven total, but as you see, I got six, so I'm not gonna buy an extra. You gotta buy them in a set, so there's two per bag. So you got three sets here. So if you're gonna have seven, then you gotta buy another another bag and you got then you got an extra one. So then you'll have eight. So uh, with that, with these type of regular chains, uh, you'll get these little tools here for the cam. Uh, I'm not going to get into putting these on and everything right now. That would be a different, a whole different video <laughs> in itself. Uh, so these come with them, and these are fine. Or uh, some truck stops, they sell a little tool that has like a T, and, and it's a little bit, I've had one before, but I don't know where it is. So you can get those. And uh, one thing, I mean, just buying these chains is not going to be enough. you got to have something. I just use bungee cords. Uh, so once you put the chain on, you got to have, uh, you'll put these bungee cords on to tension this side. And I just put two of them crossing each other. So that's about the cheapest way to do it. But like I said, those don't, this, this, if you just get the chains, um, it's not going to work very well. You're going to have to have something to tension this. So don't forget about that. Some of the truck stops, they sell those spider things, the big rubber orange things that got like six hooks on them. Uh, pretty much the same concept, but they're they're kind of expensive. I, I want to say they're they're probably twenty five or thirty dollars each, maybe a little bit more, in some places. So I just use bungee cords, and then if they're cheap. I just buy new ones. Uh, you need, like I said, two per per chain. Maybe carry a few extra too. So um, with chains, the way I look at it is these are for an emergency. I mean, if if you use proper trip planning and checking the weather i mean out when i'm out west this time of year and later i mean actually in my opinion um i think probably in the rockies they probably get more snow in april or mayish because that's when really the moisture comes in so a lot of people they think oh it's getting to be spring and all that but actually they get it seems like they get more snow out at least last year uh typically get a lot more snow this type of year and like through february it's usually not too terrible for the most part in my experience the last few years uh so i mean if you're coming out all the states like Washington, Oregon, California, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, all those, they've all got state Department of Transportation websites where you can actually get on there and look at all the roads, see what's going on, and they update it pretty regularly. I mean, sometimes on the hour if, or if something changes, a condition changes. Uh, you can even see like the digital signs, like if they've got a chain restriction going on somewhere. And, you know, and if I'm coming out of Seattle or Portland or something like that, um, there's about three or four different routes you can take. So, I mean, if I'm looking to come out of Seattle and there's something going on that's going on in my past or something up there, if there's chains on or something, uh, you know, if it takes me an hour and a half, two hours to go a different route somewhere to avoid that, um, I usually will because uh, you're going to waste half an hour or so. I mean, the first time you do this, you're probably going to waste an hour putting these on. And then it's going to take you close to the same amount of time. I mean, even if you get it down pretty quick, it's still going to take you about, if you got to put six chains on, it's going to take you a time you pull over and get everything set up, put them on. You're going to be down a half an hour, then about the same time taking them off. So you've already wasted an hour. Plus you risk one of them, one of the chains coming off and tearing your quarter fender off or getting caught up in something. Um, so it's more of an emergency, emergency thing for me. So, I mean, if I got to put chains on somewhere, then it's either a freak, snowstorm that's came out of nowhere um, or I haven't been watching the weather enough because um, there's like I said most of the places I go there's several different I mean you could take 90 or you could drop down and come down the coast uh, to Portland and then come across 84 uh, but then you might like up on the, the cabbage up there 
past Pendleton. I mean, there's been chain. I've seen chains on several times up there. Or um, I, I'm not gonna, like I said, me personally, I'm not gonna knowingly drive into that situation. I'm either gonna just wait, wait it out, and keep checking the update uh, websites until they've got it cleared and they've lifted the the chain restriction, or uh, I'll find another route. I mean, I've ran all the way down to. Uh, I guess down by Redding, California, and came around a few of the state routes, uh, up you know around Mount Shasta, and came in down 395 and down to 80 before, and it's not it's not a whole lot of time considering, uh, like I said, you risk tearing something up, or somebody they don't know what they're doing, causing a wreck, jackknifing a truck in front of you, and um, so I'm just not. I think it's an unnecessary risk. I'm not going to knowingly get into that. I mean, it's not that big of a deal to do, but you just got to, like I said, something to get tear, tore up or somebody else can screw up your day so that's my whole thing on chains so that's that uh, next thing I'm gonna move to you are probably asking why I have floor dry or you can use cat litter and a bag of salt uh, this is a calcium chloride blend and this is good down to negative 15 degrees now regular rock salt is only good to about 5 degrees or so some of it's higher than that so if you're in some place where it's negative 20 that regular rock salt isn't gonna melt it the reason I have these, if you're light, sometimes the way that you're parked and something happens, you know, you get snow during the day, whenever you, whenever you drive, whenever you're sleeping, if you get some weather or everything freezes, if you're light, you might just sit there and spin. And I'll tell you, these two items right here have probably saved me $500 tow bills probably three or four times. Uh, when I've hooked up to my trailer and couldn't get hooked up and and, uh, and then I got back, I couldn't get either way, and use this, melt the snow and ice, throw some of the floor dry or cat litter down, and that'll give you traction to get out. So it's, uh, you know, for about $15 there or so, can save you a lot of money. So that's those two things. Uh, I carry a little steel shovel, not a plastic one. That way, if you got to break some ice or something underneath, uh, the plastic ones, they'll just break, so get you a little steel one. Then uh, you got your snow brush here. Get these about anywhere, a lot of truck stops or Walmart. This one extends. You can turn it either way so you can get your get up on your windshield or your hood or whatever. And like I said, these are plat these usually break off if you try to chip hard ice with them. Okay, that won't go down. <laughs> so I guess I've already broken it. Uh, kind of along with chains. I would uh, get you a good set of insulated leather gloves, and these are muck boots. These have a steel toe and everything. These are kind of expensive, but I wear them around here. Um, something that's waterproof, and these have insulation in them too. Uh, so, I, because if you get out in regular shoes or boots, and you're and you're in a foot of snow, and usually out, it seems like it's usually a wetter snow out there, and you know you're i always like try to shove my pants down inside of them too if you're in deeper snow because if you're out there for half an hour or an hour or whatever putting this stuff on or doing whatever you got to do you're going to be your feet are going to be soaking wet if you don't have some type of waterproof like i said i'd get a waterproof insulated boot just to carry in the truck so that way you don't get back in the truck then for the rest of the day you're all soaking wet and and all that so that's what i'd recommend getting a set of those uh jumper cables if you want to carry a set of those, I mean, the heavier set, uh, you might uh, you might find somebody that's nice enough to, to give you a jump if you got the cables. Uh, so you know, a lot of times if you if you're running a lot of stuff and you don't have an APU or something and it's colder, I mean, you don't have the the cranking capacity, cranking amperage when it's that much when it's a lot colder as you do when it's warm outside. So keep that in mind. Uh, I carry a little butane torch. And uh, I have, this is good for padlocks and stuff, or your door lock. I have locking fuel caps on my truck, which I'm kind of on the fence of taking them off. I don't know, just someday, sometimes, like, you know, I've talked about it, I'll park in the back of a place with nobody's around, and I'm parked in the morning, and, you know, I, I drive at night, so I'm sleeping during the day, and I'll have somebody back up right next to me, and I don't know if they just, like, want to ruin somebody's sleep, or I don't know, maybe they're backing up next to me because they're thinking they can steal my fuel. It does it does happen out there. I mean, I've heard of a lot of places people complain and somebody came up with a little pump and whether they're sleeping and sucked their fuel out. If you're a company driver, it's one thing, but if, you, if you've got, you know, $400 of fuel in there and somebody sucks half of it out, then it's all on you. Uh, so that's, that's why I use those. But uh, they, they, 
a lot of times they'll get snow and slush in them and it'll freeze up and you'll have to melt them out. And with that, I also carry a, this is good for padlocks too, and your door locks or your, your side box uh, locks there. I carry WD-40 too uh, with a little nozzle and I'll actually, I'll spray this in my lock, all my locks about once a week because this will repel the moisture from getting in them so to keep it from freezing up. So like I said, it's good to have a WD-40 or a PB Blaster or something like that. Just, uh, just a spray in there every once in a while to, to keep the moisture out. So that can prevent those uh, locks from freezing up on you. Uh, I do have a carry can of de-icer. This is good for padlocks and locks too if they do get frozen up. Or you can use it on your windshield or, or anything that has ice on it just to take it off. So you can find that most anywhere. Truck stops and whatnot. Okay, I got two propane, well, a propane torch, but I got some tanks look like this, some tanks like look like this. Uh, I don't use, I've used the ones with the actual, the lighter built in, the igniter, but it seems like they quit working. So I just went to, I just got a striker here for a torch and, and just have the cheap one. And that seems to last the longest and work the best. The reason I have this too, again, is for padlocks for one, if you got a big padlock on the back of your trailer and it freezes up and it won't turn, it's good for that. And the other thing, when your trailer brakes lock up, <clears throat> it's not actually, a lot of times it's not actually the, the, the brake shoes freeze into the brake drums. Um, I don't have the trailer here, so I can't show you, but back by your tandems, there's a little box or valve that has a bunch of air, like six, five or six airlines going into it. And that's a quick release valve. And if you've got a little bit of water in your system, I mean, if your air dryer doesn't do a very good job or you don't drain your tanks very often, um, that's something else I recommend. Drain, in the wintertime, drain your, your air tanks on your truck more often to get that water out. Um, but in that quick release valve on that trailer, if you got water in there and it freezes and it won't let air flow through that valve, that a lot of times is what is actually causing your trailer brakes to be frozen up, quote unquote. I mean, not a lot of times it's not, like I said, the shoes freezing to the drums. It's that valve not letting air get through to release the brakes. And this, you can kind of indirectly heat that valve up. I mean, you don't want to sit there and throw direct heat to it because you can, you can melt the seals and stuff in it, but just kind of off to the side a little bit, just kind of warm it up to melt that ice in there and that will let those brakes release. So I said again, for I keep this for that and for uh, padlocks. Uh, with padlocks too, on the back of your trailer, uh, those round U-Haul locks, I would not recommend those in extreme temperatures and especially driving through uh, salt and all that because I had one, I almost had to take my grinder and cut off that it was seized up so bad after the fact. So I wouldn't recommend those in the winter time either. So, uh, rain -X or uh, windshield washer fluid. I would uh, initially starting off at the first of the year, I'd try to run your tank down the reservoir as much as possible because you're gonna have, probably have the summer blend in there. And that stuff can freeze up. It can freeze up in the tank, it can freeze up in the lines, and it can freeze up in the little pump that pumps it out to your windshield. So I would run it down as low as possible or start using a winter blend in October, November, you know, in October or so. Um, but I just started off with a negative 30 and I had about that much left in my tank, so I mixed it in, so I should be good. Um, then I'll throw some more in, so like I said I just used, that's why it's empty, I just filled that up here a little bit ago. So that's that. And then we got diesel 911. Each one of these quarts is good for 100 gallons. So if your fuel happens to gel up, you can add this. I mean, you might have to even take the fuel filters loose and dump a little bit in the fuel filters and dump the rest into your fuel tanks to get that stuff ungelled. So um, definitely keep whatever your capacity, your tanks are. Like I said, these quartz, each one's good up to 100 gallons. So I got 100 gallon tanks, so I got two bottles. So you never know. Um, so that's kind of, uh, other than that, inside the truck, I mean, I've got a little bunk heater that I got one off of. Uh, I originally had one that came from Thermo King, uh, a Wabastio, not a Wabastio, or I can't think of the name of it right now, but, but the original one, it started acting up and went bad. I mean, I put a bunch of money and parts in it and it still was acting up. So 
Um, I talked to Thermo King, and they wanted like $900 for a new unit. And I ended up going on Amazon, and I bought one of those Chinese knockoff ones. And I think we paid like $120 or something for the whole kit. And uh, it's kind of, it's actually, a, I think it's a better heater in my opinion. It's, it's got more, it's got about twice the output. Because I think my original one was like 3KW, and I think this one's 5KW. And it's kind of weird to set up. I mean, it, a lot of the instructions don't make a lot of sense, but we got it in there last. I actually put it in, in a truck stop. I took it with me and when I, I think I was out in Sacramento or something at the fly, or maybe at Lodi, at the Flying J down there where I was at. And I was there for a weekend and I actually put it in, in the truck stop. So, I mean, it, you don't really need a whole lot of special tools or anything to put it in, but it's, it's been good for you. I just started it up here a couple weeks ago on my last trip out. And, uh, you know, right off the bat, worked really good, didn't smoke or carry on or anything. And I'll show you that in there in a minute. Um, but the other things I'd probably carry in the truck with me is uh, take a sleeping bag with you just in case it gets cold somewhere. And uh, I'd take a heavy coat or a pair of insulated coveralls if you, if you got that type of stuff. Because some of these places, um, just even getting out during your pre-trip. I mean, I've been out in Montana and we've had negative 50 wind chills. So, I mean, it gets... Some of these places get extremely cold. I mean, it, it, I've had it where the inside where my windows were fogging up and then it's actually frozen on the inside of the truck. It's, the windows have been so cold. I've had frost on the inside of the truck, not only on the outside. So it gets really cold up in those areas. So uh, the other thing, uh, get, have, I wouldn't go up in those areas without a good set of drive tires. Um, I like, an, these are brand new Bridgestones. We just put these on here within the last month. Uh, these are an open shoulder. I like an open shouldered tire like this. They, they do a lot better in the snow and, and muddy areas and things like that. They clean a lot better and you get a lot better traction. This, these are Bridgestone M770s and we've done a video on these prior when we was putting them on and all that and talked about them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, these are really designed for a single axle truck. Uh, so they do exceptionally well, you know, on a tandem like this. So, um, I, if, if you've got old steer tires or, you know, you're down to 430 seconds on your, your drives, I, I would be very cautious about heading um, up to Montana, Wyoming, and, and those areas, the Pacific Northwest this time of year because um, you might have some trouble. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, equipment is pretty well common sense. Like I said, have good tires and uh, just the truck's in good condition. Uh, working condition because you don't want to break down somewhere where it's negative 30 degrees outside out in the middle of nowhere because some of those places out there it, it, they might not even be able to get to you it could take them half a day or even longer just to get out to you to tow you in or, or fix something so it's pretty serious stuff i mean people have died so um so but i'll show you that heater then that then will pretty well be it for this So this was the heater that I bought off of Amazon. There's a couple of different ones on there. They're all about the same. They're different colors. Uh, this was the 5KW model, and it actually bolted to the same place where the old, uh, the original heater was that came from Thermo King. And um, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, it's not a Lobostio. It's the other. There's another. There's another brand, German brand or something, out there. But uh, it, it uh, used the same pump, the same fuel pump and everything. So, I mean, it was pretty well plug and play for the most part. Um, I had to take, uh, change the plug off the harness from the original heater. Then it, this one has its own little separate panel in there. So it doesn't, um, as far as I know, it doesn't have a, um, like a thermostat. It's just got one, two, three, four, five settings. And I know it will, like if it's 40 degrees outside and even if you got it on the first setting a lot of times you might have to crack the window so i mean it, it puts out you you kick it up to level five i mean i've had it out negative 40 negative 50 last year with the wind chill i mean close to you know 20 negative 25 ambient temperature and on uh level five level four and five in there it will it'll keep you pretty warm so um so i think it's a, a good value for 110 dollars so, or 120 or whatever it was so uh, that's pretty much it for this. Uh, we've got a couple other things. I got to put a wiring harness, engine harness on the truck. So I'll be doing that here shortly. And um, I was, might go ahead and grease this thing today too. So I might do something on that. But uh, again, uh, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Uh, we do a lot of stuff on trucking, owner operator stuff, Landstar stuff. 
Uh, we do a lot of farm stuff too, uh, working on equipment, working on trucks, tractors. Uh, we're kind of winding down as far as that type of stuff. I mean, we got some winter, winter stuff for our greenhouse and all that. We might do some stuff on this year. Um, but other than that, like I said, uh, like the video, subscribe, hit the bell for the updates, and uh, we'll see you all next time. All right, everybody, I almost forgot this portion. Uh, or one last thing here that's kind of important, so we have to throw this on the end. So sorry we didn't get it. I forgot to put it in earlier, like right after we shut the camera off, and I was like, oh, I forgot to do that. Um, the other thing I would carry would be a set of fuel filters or at least the, the primary element. Um, yours may look, this is a Packard one, and uh, this is just a, an element type filter. So I'd carry a set of those. Um, I mean, this truck's got the canister one. I don't worry about that one as much. And my truck actually has a little heating element at the bottom of the globe in there that heats the fuel too to prevent uh, the fuel from gelling up. But uh, that's just something else uh, you can throw in the truck and keep with you. Um, so if it does, if you do have a gel up situation, you can change them out because it can ruin those filters. So I would carry a set of those two with you. I mean, that, that element one, you get a lot more heat from the engine and whatnot up here. So it's not, I usually don't carry that one. I just carry an extra one of the primary elements here. Um, the other thing we will, uh, as far as the, the heater and stuff like that, we got off Amazon, we'll put a link in the description for you guys if you guys are interested in looking at those. Like I said, I've had mine, uh, I put it in about a, a little over a year ago. I think I put it in last October. It's been in a little over a year. And like I say, uh, for $120 or what it was right, right about that price, um, really good value. I mean, it, it keeps it warmer than what the, the truck does. I mean, if I was to idle the truck and, and I, I've got three batteries in my truck and even with, even if without the APU, without it running, um, I can pretty much run that thing for 12 hours or so without my low voltage uh, alarm coming off because it just runs off of the, uh, it burns fuel. So the only thing that it's using battery power for is for the little glow plug and for the fan and the little fuel pump. So it's all relatively low draw stuff. So with a, I may go ahead and add another bat. I got enough room where I think I could probably put five batteries in here. And I'm thinking about adding one more battery um, just to give me a little bit more capacity in the winter time and stuff if I'm not running the tri-pack. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to get that in there on this one. Um, so sorry about that. But again, uh, subscribe if you haven't, hit the bell for the updates, and uh, like the video. We'll see you all next time.